John Maganda would like to thank God for the gift of life, protection, and provision, especially in this pandemic time of COVID. We also continue to pray for the clergy and the Christians in the parish of Gambia that the Lord may continue to bless them and protect them. We also pray for the sick, for the orphans, for the widows, those who are discriminated, that the good Lord may comfort the, them. And they also continue to pray for the souls of the departed. Another mass intention, Mr. Nelson Etalu prays for the souls in purgatory, for the aborted children and those in their last agony. They also pray for the entire church in the world. They pray for the priests to be protected in this period. And they also continue to pray through the session of Christ our Lord to forgive the sins of people in the whole world. In this mass also, Mikisa Daniel prays for his brother Isavriel Festo, who is admitted in hospital, that the Lord may touch him with his healing mercies. And we also pray in a very special way in this mass for the soul of our Sister Annette, of the Benedictine sisters who passed on, that the Lord may receive her in his eternal dwelling. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Friends, welcome to the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year B. And we listen to a God who transforms us, He calls us, and makes us new, converts our hearts, as we see in the call of Prophet Amos and his role to go out and uh, talk to the people over Bethel to transform their lives and to change to the ways of the covenant. We also see Jesus calling the disciples, commissioning them, transforming them from ordinary fishermen and illiterate people into instruments of God in casting demons, healing, preaching the good news. And God calls all of us for a purpose so that he can make us anew, so that he can do great things with us. But many times we fail this test of God. When he calls us many times, we don't listen. When he calls us many times, we don't transform because of our weakness of human sin. Let us take a moment of silence and so ask God for his mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and, and to my brothers, brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and strive after all that does it honor for our Lord Jesus Christ your son lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Go prophesy to my people. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 7, verse 12 to 15. Amos, chapter 7, verse 12 to 15. In those days, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, O seer, Go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at, Beth at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herds, I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore or sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial son. Let, let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let, let us see, see, O Lord, Lord your, your mercy, and, and grant us, us your, your salvation. salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will, will dwell in our land. Response. Let Lord, us see, O oh Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Response. Let, Let us see, O oh Lord, Lord, your mercy, and, and grant us your, us your salvation. salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his, bo his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Response. Let, Let us see, O Lord, Lord, your mercy and grant us your, your salvation. The second reading. The second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as, even as he chooses, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He detained us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ. According to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the, full, for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. He who first hoped in Christ have been destined and appointed to live for the praises of his glory. In him you also have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him. We and have believed in him who are filled with the promised Holy Spirit, who is guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us welcome the gospel. and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bark, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, where you enter a house, Stay there until you leave the place. And if any place will not receive you, and they refuse to hear you, when you leave, shake up the dust that is on your feet for a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus called to him the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. Friends, this is the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year B. If you remember last Sunday, what we saw was about the power of God manifested through ordinary people that God called them like Prophet Ezekiel and also Jesus, an ordinary Jew from Nazareth doing great things and many people casting doubts. Isn't this the man that we grew up with here in this neighborhood? And that is who God is. God surprises us by picking the unknown and makes them known. And today we continue with that same amazing experience of God who calls us and transforms us, calls us and makes us new. And how do we see this? Through our prophet Amos in the first reading, the prophet expresses out his humble background, his ordinary background, to Amaziah the priest. There was a conflict between prophet Amos and Amaziah the priest of Bethel. Remember, Israel at that time was divided into two kings, the north and the south kingdoms. And uh, God commissions Amos to go to the south, to go to the north, to minister there, to talk to the leaders of the north, to denounce them because they had left the covenant of God. There was a lot of injustices. There was a lot of uh, exploitation of the people and all that. And they had violated the covenant. And Amos is picked, is commissioned, and goes there to preach a repentance. And he meets Amaziah the priest. And this priest is a servant to the king. And uh, he tells Amos, yells at him, barks at him, go back. Go and prophesy back in Judah, wherever you came from. Leave us alone. But Amos told him, you know what? Who am I? I'm just a prophet. Who am I? I'm just a herdsman. Who am I? God just called me to serve his people. So this was the response of Amos. He didn't pride in himself, but just told Amaziah the priest, I am simply a messenger of God. I'm simply a prophet of Yahweh. I don't have human power, but it's Yahweh's power that I come with to preach repentance, to preach change in your lives and the people. And uh, that is how God calls us. The voice of God works through prophets like Amos when he goes to the leaders of Bethel so that the leaders can be transformed, so that the people can be transformed and get back to the covenant. But this Amos was an ordinary man, picked and headsman, picked from the wilderness to come and serve. God called him, God transformed him from ordinariness to extraordinariness. And that's how God calls and transforms us and makes us great, makes us do great things, <coughs> makes us new. And that's what we hear and that's what today's Sunday is about. God calling you, God calling me and changing us and making us do greater things for his name. It's the same thing we see in the gospel of Mark chapter 6 verse 7 to 13. Jesus commissions these ordinary men who are fishermen who had no background in terms of intellectual class, in terms of all that simple people, low class people. He called them and transformed them into great prophets. He commissioned them two by two. These were the disciples. These were the apostles. They were given power, power to cast out demons, to cast out evil spirit. They preached their word of speech, their speech, their lips would proclaim life. They would speak life. They would speak words of life. They proclaimed this gospel in the villages, in the towns, everywhere. They are winning back souls to God. Ordinary people transformed by God because they listened to God's call. If you remember <laughs> the dramatic calls of some of these apostles, the fishermen, they left their nets immediately 
and followed this stranger called Jesus that never met and they stopped all that they were doing, you know. And that is how God calls us and changes us. And these ordinary men were disciples, casting out demons and clean spirits. And we hear when Jesus commissions them, tells them to carry nothing, carry nothing with them. It's symbolic. It's just the power of God and how we depend on God in everything we do. God is so amazing. When he calls you, when he sends you to do his mission, we worry not. We don't worry because he takes care of all our worries, of all our needs. They are told not to travel with extra clothes, those are tunics, not to carry any money with them. That means our ministry, as I preach here, our ministry, the mission of God is not profit-oriented, I repeat. The ministry and the work we do for God is not profit-oriented. It's God first. It's the people we serve that come first in our lives before we even think of any monetary terms. This is the experience of people like Amos, the disciples. I had an experience when I was still a student in uh, Nairobi for all those years. I got into a matatu, you know, and often those matatus from uh, Nairobi back to Kar somebody just gets up, the passenger, and holds a Bible, preaches the word of God with nourishes life, which is very good. But as he's about to embark on another stage, after the preaching, he'll start asking people for money. But then, of course, I was shocked. I was like, I mean, I first do the work of God. What does somebody will give? Is it about you first? Do you matter first? Or it's about the monetary gains? And these are the things Jesus challenges us with today. When he calls us and tells the disciples, carry nothing. It's all about the mission of God first, the people of God first that we need to save. We need to save souls first, the rest come later. And God will bless you through generous hearts of many people. So this is how God calls us and transforms us and wants us to be that way. All of us who work in God's kingdom, our motivation for ministry, is it money? Or is it the life and faith of the people first? to give our lives to people, be there to them, listen to them. You know, these are the qualities and attitudes that makes us really good stewards and servants of God. Of course, we know the church is not run by just praying rosaries alone. We need money to run the church. We need money to pay our bills. We need money to buy fuel and move around and do ministry. All those are needed. But once our attitude first is saving lives, souls of God, the rest will always be provided for by God. It's this attitude that shapes us and makes us great prophets like the disciples, like Amos, of putting the people of God first. The prosperity gospel is good. It shines, it glows, but also it needs a balance. The primary call is the people of God that we are urged to get to, to get close to, to meet and help first before anything else comes. And uh, we ministers, God calls us and transforms us daily. God calls you who is listening, who is in this mass. God calls you daily. God has called you even before you were born to transform you. And uh, this is what... God does in this uh, Sunday when we see the life of Amos, when we see the disciples. When the disciples were commissioned and they shook up dust of their feet, it's symbolic also that the word of God is voluntary. It's a choice to accept God or reject God. And uh, But if you and me allow God to come in our lives to transform us, in our weaknesses we become stronger than rejecting God. We make good choices that represent us as baptized Catholics. In our second reading, St. Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3 to 14, it's the crown of everything today in the Sunday. It is about the amazing transformation of God, that God, you are a story of God. 
God has changed. God is molding you. God has been molding you. God has called you to make you new. And how do we thank God for that? Through the sacrifice of mass, this liturgy right now we are into, we're expressing our voice of gratitude to God. God has blessed you. The liturgy is a thanksgiving. We offer gratitude to God for every spiritual blessing he has bestowed on us, on you, on me. God has elected you, as St. Paul tells us. God has chosen you. God has called you to be his own. You belong to God. You don't belong to anything else. You don't belong. I've always been. We do ministry. We go out, do exorcisms and uh, removing of witchcraft and all that stuff planted in compounds, in homes and all that. And I keep telling people, you belong, don't belong to the spirits of this world. We belong to God. God has a higher spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, that reigns above all these fetishes that we have, that have made us slaves, that we are bound to. Therefore, we belong to God. We belong to God. Our union with God is something that is very, very immense. God has elected you. God has chosen you to be his own. You belong to him. Not to the world, not to the weaknesses of this world, not to the judgments of this world, but to God's judgment in heaven. God has chosen you and me to be holy without sin. Of course, you love what you ask yourself. We sin every day. Yes, it is human. But God gives us a chance every day. Whenever we fall, he picks us up. He raises us up again and gives us another opportunity every day. Through the sacrament of reconciliation and all these other sacraments in the church. Through his son Jesus Christ we share in that life of the cross where we are saved. God has bestowed grace on you. God has extended his hand to you that my child, my daughter, hold my hand, come to me, respond to my call, you're my child. Share in my life and that is grace. St. Paul tells, continues to tell us that you and me are people of dignity. Why? Because of your vocation as a Christian. You have a big inheritance. Of course, when we're in this world, we inherit property, houses, money, all that from our parents, grandparents, and all that. But there's something bigger than that. There's a bigger inheritance that you and me have by virtue of being Christians. And that is the everlasting life where we are promised to live with the Son of God Forever, that is the special inheritance we have. As I conclude my teachings today, know that God called has blessed you. God is transforming you every day. God has elected you. God has destined you for eternal glory. Just allow him to be in your life. God is assuring you that my child, my daughter, despite your humble background, like Amos, these disciples, don't worry about that. There's something greater than that about you. God is calling you as a Christian that you are a believer. Before you were born, he blessed you already. He gave you a name already. You're a holy child and daughter of God. And that is what Jesus promises us and makes us precious in that way. God has empowered you. God has given you authority through your baptism. Even when churches are closed during this COVID period, you know, people keep calling me, Father, bless my water, blah, Father, this and this and this. But I want to tell you, don't be afraid. And as much as now with all this COVID and we can't, churches are closed, we can't access people. Believe in yourself. Have that faith. The gifts you've got through the virtue of baptism are enough to sustain you in this period, even when you don't access priests for sacraments and all that. Have that belief in yourself that God, you're special. You're great in the spirit. You can do all these that the apostles did. You can pray. You can cast demons. You can do all that. You're gifted spiritually. That confidence is what sustains you. And that is the reward God gives us today and assures us today. Continue to pray in this mass that the Lord may continue to strengthen us and make us always closer to him. The Lord be with you.
and with yes. your spirit. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and the one of Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, was substantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. And he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, he was in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, he was buried, and the third day rose from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are present before you, Lord. In this 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we pray, Lord, that our Holy Father for Francis, the Order of Bishops, the entire clergy, as they continue to shepherd the people of God, you may continue to give them that wisdom, that assurance, that confidence of faith to serve the people of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for our leaders leaders all over the world, I am not saying a special leaders in this country, Uganda, that the Lord may give them the gift of wisdom, they may exercise love, unity and faith in serving the people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Yeah. We pray for those who are suffering in various ways, especially the sick, those suffering from COVID-19 in this pandemic, in hospitals, that the Lord may touch them. With his healing hand, the Lord may give them courage, comfort, and consolation. And the others also who are sick of various ailments, the terminally ill, those with cancer, and various uh, diseases, that the Lord, the wonderful healer, may touch them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. And all of us gathered here in this uh, radio station, the management, the staff, and we here who are gathered here, our intentions, all that we intend to do, all our prayers, our daily prayers, and all that, that the Lord may listen to them, the Lord may grant them to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. And we also pray for the soul of Sister Annette, the Benedictine, who left us, that the Lord may continue to bless her soul in eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. God the Father, hear our prayers, hear us for this son. The Holy Spirit, hear our prayers, mercy on your people, Lord. We make a prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all for the church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We raise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. You are indeed holy, O Lord. <laughs> it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and humanity. Oh, all the world in all its wonder. To rule in your name, all you have made and forever praise you. In your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all angels we praise you. And in joyful celebration we acclaim.
created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the upon working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting the pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. betrayed in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me and he shall come in glory. And he shall come in glory. And he shall come in glory. As we celebrate the memory of the saving portion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his own spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church and our with your servant Francis of Hope and Charles Martin, a bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him, the God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art right in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. As, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory is, is now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace, wave at your neighbor, smile at your neighbor. <laughs> Chibumba ni we Atora we vivi tusasine Akatama ka chibumba ni we Atora we vivi tusasine Akatama ka chibumba ni we Atora we vivi tusasine Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word. And my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
consume these gifts we pray alone that by our participation in this mystery its saving effects upon us may grow 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. We can be seated for brief announcements. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank this wonderful team that is here with us, uh, Kathy, uh, Gerald on the keyboard, and uh, Dan. Thank you, team, for this uh, wonderful uh, active participation in the liturgy. And I uh, also want to thank our listeners. Always keep it on Smart FM. We always have this Sunday. After this Sunday, we skip one, then you know it is us again. So next Sunday, not us, but again, the other one, like that, like that. So let's stay tuned. Thank you for keeping it on Smart. Thank you for experiencing the love of God in this sacrifice of Mass. God bless you, and uh, we continue praying for you. I also want to send out my words of uh, uh, encouragement to the Christians of Holy Cross Parish, Bugembe, where I serve um, Father Barry Apire, Assistant Parish Priest, Holy Cross Parish, Bugembe, but also working as Director of Holy Cross Family Ministries, uh, Jinja Region. To all parishioners, the Christians out in Bugembe, we are praying for you. I know we cannot access you because of lockdown and all that. COVID is real. But uh, we pray for you every day. We love you. In our prayers, we celebrate our private masses. But having you people on in our thoughts, placing you in the altar of the Lord in prayer. So be rest assured of our prayers for you always. And for in case you need any services from the church, the office is open. The parish secretary opens our office. You can go there, offer your tithe, uh, tithe envelopes, or any other uh, uh, business that you know want to conduct in the parish. Because most people have been calling me for the tithe envelopes and all that. We are we are not meeting people physically, but you can get to the office and you will be uh, served. We continue praying for all of you. And uh, also we continue praying for our sister Annette who left us. Uh, we continue to pray for the peaceful repose of our souls. Continue praying for her. Let's also continue praying for this pandemic, COVID-19. Nothing is impossible with God that we continue praying for God to intervene in this. But also we continue keeping safe social distance. Stay at home if you don't have anything to do in town. Stay at home. Let's not move unnecessarily. Let's have our masks on. As I'm celebrating Mass here, all of us are in masks. You see, with sanitizers around and all that to help us curb this pandemic. COVID is very expensive. Once you get it, it's not easy. So better you maintain that negative status you have by keeping safe. And then lastly, I want to speak about uh, the Infinite Singers. We are making one year as a, a group of young youths who are having passion and zeal to get, make God known, loved and served through singing. So and I remember we were here around last year, around this time, in this very studio. So we are making one year of serving God and uh, praising God, worshiping God, inspiring the young people as a new way of evangelization in the church to make God known, loved and served through singing. So continue to pray for us. Go to our YouTube channel, Infinite Singers, and you like our page, subscribe our channel, like it, comment, our Facebook page. And this is how we, the church wants to get into a new evangelization, bringing this gospel message to the corners of the streets, to the young people and all that. Oftentimes people get tired hearing you preach and preach and preach, but you can preach the same gospel, especially to our young people. In such a manner. So continue to pray for us in our first year's anniversary. And also hopefully Kathy will play uh, some of our songs. I'll get it to you so that they get to know you know, who we are. With these words, thank you so much our dear listeners. And may God continue blessing and protecting you in this uh, period. Thank you so much. Thank you dear Father. We can rise for the last blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, might God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and then thanks be to God.